Hi, my name is Todd Seiler, and um, I wear lots of hats. Um, literally, I have been making art since I was a little kid, and um, my criticism and art criticism comes from sort of history and art history. And uh, so I, I want to spin some of the conversations that we have here because everything that Keely and Michael said are spot on about the environment and what you're experiencing here. What I would like to show you are a couple examples of, of things that have moved me over the last 20 years of looking here and, and being kind of present in this community and understanding that given all of the constraints on the arts that have, this is an amazing community, I have to tell you, because I'm a, a New Yorker uh, transplant, um, and my studio used to be in Long Island City before it was built PS1 and built up and gentrified and so forth to all those points you're making. And <clears throat> what impresses me about Denver, about this entire region, is the enormous human ingenuity and, and how people are reinventing themselves, how they are in fact, you know, I always say, you know, my, my, my brain is an R&D lab always open to wonder and we have to figure out how we can purpose what we do as artists, as art critics to help a world community understand uh, what we do. And in fact, this is very much a world community. I don't see it in a very provincial way. I see it very globalized because many of the artists working in this city do work internationally. They have a presence internationally, and in fact, their concepts, philosophies, ways of looking at the world are redefining the very nature of what art is. For me, so you understand where I'm coming from, art is all representations of thought. It opens the big lens up for a lots of ways of taking the arts and applying arts-based ways of looking at the world and strategies for helping others understand their community and world and participation in a very, very large way. So I put this up there and the word unforgettable to me is one of the impressions as they move through a gallery of space, it could be anywhere, any, any of the galleries that they mentioned, any of the spaces that we mentioned, really what impressions leave me as I, I think, was this unforgettable? Was this something that I'll remember and think and make personally meaningful to me? And one of the things that I want to say, and I'm just going to, in a cursory way, skim through, when I go into an environment and look, I'm not necessarily looking, wanting to understand instantly what the entire environment is about. It's what strikes me, whether it's, you know, something that is as deeply crafted and beautiful, not simply sort of this ornamental, um, uh, looking like a monumental ornamentation from Kim Dickey's work, but I go up and I look and I begin to see elements of it and put it on from the uninitiated. I try to immerse myself. And it's important as you go through these environments, I just want to kind of single out, you begin to see that Every aspect of symbol making, of using mediums and all kinds of elements that make great work work are things that as the public begins to understand more about what those processes, what the ways of, of looking at and, and, and building experiences, aesthetic experiences, how they're applied to in, our, in our lives in a, a very personally meaningful way are things that can help others who are not particularly uh, game to understand or even immerse yourself, to go on in a journey in something that is both um, in, in the most literal and symbolic way has that richness that can relate to all of our lives. And I, um, in the course of looking at and going through, you know, the, the Clifford Still, and I look at works on paper, again, to hit a range of sensibility. It's very pluralistic kind of perspective. I look at these beautiful, pieces and, and as a, uh, coming from both the conventions and the unconventional because of the range of media that, that artists are working in now, I think one of the tactile, one of the dimensions of all of the contributions that the arts enable us to free our minds and, and understand and rethink what we thought we knew, we get when we look at Different examples, like these works on paper, these pastels that are a selection of these uh, works, and, and how someone is working on an intimate scale on a monumental scale. So I just want to put that out there <clears throat> and suggest that, in fact, with all the new media, 
here is Michael Theodore's piece that is called Swarm. And I just want to show you one example of it because I thought it may be appropriate to show something that looks so mechanical, but in fact is so organic and uh, uh, kind of evokes all kinds of moods. And when you watch and experience how this structure comes to be and the interactivity in all these pieces that are cobbled together with great ingenuity, and you have an experience, and I'll give you a little sample of this here to have a sense of these, or these inorganic materials that are made very organic and spontaneous and interactive through this kind of percussion wall. That when you are outside, you feel like you're hearing wind and nature coming in, and it's so reflective in this kind of grand sweeping way. So as you're interacting with this wall, the piece, you're immersing in it, you're, you're responding to it, it's responding to you, and there's an organicness that's very, very special to it. I want to uh, call out an exceptional exhibition at the Museum of Outdoor Arts now by Lumax, and there it is uh, Dorothy and <clears throat> uh, Mel's Tanner's exhibition there. It's really an, a superb one to give you an example of how one individual, the evolution of their work, to see their work in this a comprehensive way and then to maybe experience it in that space, you really begin to see sort of the parallel playing that is going on both in this city and with the world at large of pieces that go back to the 1960s all the way to the present that are using all kinds of mediums to uh, express and embody the nature of light and how in fact we are, we are moved and shaped by it. The expression that is written here, by the way, as you see there, it says, you know, about behind everything in here in light and make it into a shape, a shape that not only solidifies light, but the light that the light touches. And if you think about it, that expression could work for James Terrell's work, okay? But it's expressed very, very differently in the way that these pieces are embodied. And they were created over the course of many, many, many years, and the evolution of that work is critical to kind of call out here. Just as one piece I'll show you here with uh, Dor Dorothy Tanner and Mark Billard, this is a collaboration, and it's a work that, to me, echoes back to pieces that I've seen and people working, such as at the Center for Advanced Visual Studies at MIT, where I worked for many years with people like Otto Pina and others. And so here you'll have a...